If you study the frescoes and the paintings in the gloomy galleries of the San Agustin Monastery of Manila's Intramuros, you will gain the impression that the Spaniards arrived in the Philippines to deliver the barbarians from their pagan ways. The reality was very different and often more complicated. You would think that saintly priests intervened to save innocent and ignorant natives from rapacious conquistadors ready to pillage and destroy. While this might be partly true, the natives were not as ignorant as portrayed. Islam had arrived in this archipelago ahead of the Spaniards. Many historians have claimed that the Philippines peacefully accepted Spanish rule. The reality is that insurgencies and rebellions continued in different places through the Hispanic colonial period. According to anthropologist Professor Susan Russell, Spain's colonial ambitions were made easier by the fact that most Philippine communities, with the exception of the Muslim sultanates in the Sulu archipelago in Mindanao, were fairly small, without a great deal of centralized authority. Authority was wielded by a variety of individuals, including firstly headmen or Datu, and secondly warriors of great military prowess, thirdly individuals who possessed a spiritual power or magical healing abilities. The absence of centralized power meant that a small number of Spaniards were able to convert a large number of Filipinos living in politically autonomous units more easily than they could have, say, converted people living in large, organized, complex kingdoms, such as those Hinduized or later Thervada Buddhist influenced kingdoms in mainland Southeast Asia and on the islands of Java and Indonesia. The Spanish was unsuccessful in converting Muslim sultanates to Christianity and in fact warred with Filipino Muslims throughout their 300 year colonial rule from 1521 to 1898 nor did they successfully conquer certain highland areas, such as the Luzon Highlands, where a diverse array of ethno-linguistic groups use their remote, difficult, mountainous terrain to successfully avoid colonization. Ferdinand Magellan's arrival in Cebu represents the first attempt by Spain to convert Filipinos to Roman Catholicism. The story goes that Magellan met with Chief Humabon of the island of Cebu, who had an ill grandson. Magellan, or one of his men, was able to cure or help this young boy, and in gratitude, Chief Humabon allowed 800 of his followers to be baptized in a mass baptism. Later, Chief Lapu-Lapu of Mactan Island killed Magellan and routed the ill-fated Spanish expedition. This resistance to Western intrusion makes the story an important part of the nationalist history of the Philippines. The San Agustin Monastery Complex is linked to adjoining San Agustin Church by a series of cloisters, arcades, courtyards and gardens. Together the monastery and the church are the repository of what is considered to be the most priceless Philippine collection of religious art, including the earliest dated retablo, wall paintings, <coughs> pulpit, choir lectern, choir stalls and an important archive of books. Both monastery and church are located in nostalgic intramuros. During the 
350 years of Spanish rule, Manila's Intramuros was the nerve center of the country. Even if Intramuros today is a ghost of what it originally was, the aura of Spain still lingers in its ruins. The interior of the San Agustin church is superb. Traces of the original wall painting done in Mexican style can still be seen. The existing trompe l'oeil interior painting was done in the late 19th century, a style that influenced the interior painting of many Philippine churches. The structural design of the church is extraordinary. It is said that the structure is supported by a raft-type foundation that permits the entire structure to sway during earthquakes. San Agustin Church also boasts one of the <coughs> superb examples, and perhaps the only one in the country, of a barrel vault, dome and arched vestibules supporting its choir loft, all of these made of stone. <laughs>